Welcome to our time of meditation. With an invitation today to settle in and to sense that there is only love. Whether you're here in the love soup of this space <laughs> or you are out there in Zoomlandia adding to the love soup wherever you are, I invite you now to soften into these next few minutes, settling in with spirit. Gently close your eyes or simply let your gaze settle in front of you. Sense your feet resting on the floor. And notice all the places where your body is supported wherever you sit. And taking a breath in and out. Allow yourself to arrive gently and fully in the stillness and softening of this moment just as it is. Listen to the voice of spirit gently whispering in your heart and mind and set your intention as you journey inward, trusting that as you go deeply inside, you affirm that you rest always in that one power and presence of the ever-present love of God. Breathing in and out. Sensing the rhythm of your own breath. I invite you to bring your awareness to your heart center. Sense the rhythm of your own heart beating. And sense the physical space of your heart center. Feel the rhythm of your breath. Breath in, breath out. Warming your heart space, centering on the presence of spirit in each breath, in every cell. Warmth gathering around your heart. Warmth and light growing with a deep desire to awaken, to soften, to transform, to heal. Warmth of compassion and self-compassion Expanding with each breath. Breathe in kindness. Breathe out empathy, forgiveness. Your healing prayer expands with each breath. Breath in, charged with love.
breath out, charged with love. Heart center filled with love, softening with light, centered in spirit. Feel the radiant light of love that lives in your heart expanding and growing with deep awareness that there is only love. Softening, you're filled with the infinite love of spirit. Softening in this moment in this place, remembering that there is only love. With each breath in, each breath out, your love flows forth. in this moment, in this place. There is only love that heals and sets us free. Remember who you are, beloved child of the divine. As you sense your love flowing in and out with each breath, <coughs> sense the presence of another being, another divine child near you in body or in spirit, whose love is also flowing forth. and sense that each one of us is a breathing, life-giving cell in the heart of the world, in the heart of all that is. May the love awakening inside of me and awakening inside of you and inside all of us together transform our world. May it be so, and so it is. Amen. Amen. I love how often that Karen Drucker song is a perfect soundtrack for our day. It is a song over the years that has been one of the songs that I sing to myself, sing in the car, sing in moments when my hair is on fire, moments when I'm calm and centered. It is one of the soundtrack songs of my life, and I love that it is one of our soundtrack songs as well. There are many charisms or gifts of the Spirit that we could use for this community. But love is not only a through line, it is foundationally who we are. It's all about love. Yesterday I had the delight and honor to swim in the joyful part of love with Tamara and Lance, who some of you have met here at Unity. They were with us on our first social justice circle Sunday. 
And the first time I met them was their first time here in person on November 7th when I was introduced as your brand new minister. And I used these words that you will hear again, because I will say them again, that in this relationship, in our key relationships, we both soften each other's edges and sharpen them. Words that I often use in a marriage ceremony to talk about that key relationship of what happens when we co-create the life we envision. It's all about love. We are a spirit-centered community. We warmly welcome all we embrace diversity. We walk our talk with integrity. We are compassionate. We are joyful. We practice sacred service. We claim spiritual abundance. As I mentioned in my welcome this morning, I'll share a few thoughts about what these words mean to me how they spoke to me from my first initial online dating, looking at you on your website. Before we said our I do's, really it does feel like a lifetime ago, those two, two Sundays ago. But the lifetime is encompassed in every one of those moments, isn't it? It's all the joy, it's all the sorrow. It's all of those needs that keep us coming back here, finding that grounding together. So I'll show you a little bit today. I'll describe what they mean to me, but I really and truly want this to be an engaging of what they mean to us. I am the head collaborator right now, yes. <laughs> I'd love for you to get to know what I'm thinking, where I am, to show you how I am called to grow as your spiritual leader by my relationship with you. You soften my edges and you sharpen my edges. You make me show up in the world in a different way because I have to show up for you and with you. We do this. For each other. So I don't want this conversation over the next couple of weeks in May to only be me. So there will be some questions at the end. There's no quiz, no test, no 10 page essay, please. Please. But I do want to know what your thoughts are, what your insights are, what makes your heart sing, and what do you rub up against that says, well, we want to be that, but we could be more. Or yeah, I feel like this one is where we're at. I want to know from you. So that as we engage in these, it's an engagement by all of us. Who we are. In word. In our hearts. And in our actions. And how we show up as love. In the world. So over my weeks here six whole months <laughs> we've had a lot of conversations about love i talked one week about the greek words for love and the different ways that those words show us a different side of what that means I talked a little bit that sunday about how my teenage nephew has totally boycotted the word love because he thinks it is so overused that it is practically meaningless. He hasn't been here yet. <laughs> Yesterday, I reminded not only Lance and Tamara about what that means for them, but all of us there. Because a wedding, an installation, those big life moments when we celebrate what love is in the joyful version of that, those are reminders too. 
that sometimes love is sweet and tender and soft. And sometimes it is fierce. And life calls us to be more than we think we can be. And we're showing up with 100% of what we have to offer. But it feels like it's only meeting 10% of what the world or the situation or our family or our beloved needs. That's the way it goes. That's why we need each other. For me, love as the starting point, as the foundation of everything else, means leaning into relationship above all else. When my kids were teenagers, it, it meant leaning into I love you over, okay, you're right, I've only yelled at you about your room, your hair, and your grades. I've got to get a grip. Literally. A, a fight about that with my son. Leaning into relationship over my need to be right, my need to have a situation unfold according to my will. Love as the foundation means a default setting to kindness, to generosity of spirit, to trust. It means speaking our truth with clarity and courage, setting aside that need to be right. It means listening with open ears and an open heart. A healthy, loving relationship doesn't mean we lean so far into relationship that we lose ourselves or that we let ourselves be walked over in unhealthy ways, because that involves self-love and self-compassion. The healthy setting and respecting of boundaries is a part of it. Boundaries as an individual that can grow and expand to invite it all in, but that lives in trust. In a community like this, love as the foundation means all of the ways I have witnessed you showing up for each other, showing up for me, showing up for our larger community in prayer, in fellowship and friendship, in the tangible support you give financially, so generously, so that we can keep growing and thriving in this physical space and in this heart space. Love is the 28 people who showed up to do spring cleaning of this space. <laughs> it's the ushers, it's the board, it's the musicians, it's the tech team, it's our friends who step in when we need them for extra support. It's the social justice circle. It's the many, many, many hands that make light work of all that happens here. And you know, because you listen to those announcements every week, that there's a lot happening at Unity <laughs> Church in Albany. Always. So here is a little bit of my thinking about our core values who we say we are, who we aspire to be, and what I have witnessed, and how love is the foundation of all of that. We are a spirit-centered community. Well, that's cool. What does that mean? <laughs> I'll show you. I'll tell you one way that I have seen it show up. A spirit-centered community, in a nitty-gritty way, has to do with a nominating committee that does discernment about who should we ask to run for our board of trustees. We need a board of trustees to help with the running and holding of the consciousness of this church. 
spiritual discernment. Once that board comes into being, and I don't know about you, but I don't think there are many boards of trustees who work this way, you run for an office. You do not run for an office at Unity Church. You step in after discerning, is this mine to do? And then together, the board discerns what of those jobs, because it is also about the doing, as well as the holding and the being, what lights you up? What is spirit guiding you to say yes to? That makes us unique even among other churches in a spirit-centered community. When we're faced with a difficult situation like do we mask or unmask, what do we do with this? We're tired of masking. I'm tired of mic on, mask off. And yet, in discernment, together as a leadership team, in discernment, we recognize that we're here to care for an entire community beyond our own individual needs or wants. And so we remain masking for protection of anybody who is more vulnerable in our community. Spirit-centered discernment, prayers for guidance. We have such an active prayer ministry. If you have something that you're struggling with on the inside in your life, put it in the answer box. Send it to Dennis. Those prayers go out to the entire prayer team and then go on to silent unity and people all around the world are holding your intentions in their prayers. That is spirit-centered. And we nurture our relationship with spirit. Here we are. We're doing the feeding. We're feeding each other right now so that we can remain spirit-centered, so we can grow deeper in that centering that everything we do, we don't ignore our minds, we don't ignore our bodies. We are not just spirits walking around floating in the air. Some days it feels kind of floaty. Some days it feels like a thunk to earth. But everything we do, all that we are, stems from that relationship to our own inner divine spark and how we nurture that spark in each other. We are a spirit-centered community. And it shows. We warmly welcome all. Man, you are welcoming. <laughs> As a pretty much a newbie, I can say, your welcome has been astounding, life-affirming, joyful. Ah! It is one of the things that makes my spirit float. But you are welcoming. Tamara and Lance, that first day they were here, eagle eyes spotted, I don't think I've seen you here before, welcome. If you are new-ish to this community, I bet 100% clearly that you have been welcomed by somebody or some buddies in this space, yes? We are a warmly welcoming community. And we have a sense of taking a welcome into a broader perspective when something challenges us. Racially motivated violence in Buffalo, New York. To take the broad view of welcoming in that individual's humanity while we recognize the pain that that action caused. It's a congregant who can write a poem about what can we invite in when our window is broken. We welcome it all in. And we make room for that. And we make room for each other. Because there is no separation. There is no othering. And how do we grow that even more deeply? 
we embrace diversity. Diversity of experience, diversity of background. I know there are many recovering Catholics in this room. There are people who go to both churches, multiple churches. There are people who practice Buddhism. There are people who are Jewish. We invite in all of those diverse, rich experiences. And we live in a culture that is complex. That sometimes reacts in violence to the diversity of our skin, the diversity of our religious background. And how are we then called to work on and understand our relationship to that culture in which we live? How are we actively showing up in a different way? We walk our talk with integrity. Oh, boys, uh, yes and. That's the ongoing life work, right? I, here I am. I'm on my straight and narrow. I've got my eyes set on my path. And then something veers me. How do I veer myself back to where God is calling? How do I listen? How do I sense where my spirit is singing and leading me forward in integrity? That's the ongoing work of our lifetime. It's individual, inner, hard work of listening to where is God leading me now? And this is where we soften and sharpen each other's edges because we help each other on that path to live in integrity of who we say we are, that's the gift of community. When I'm having a hard time seeing where my path is or hearing the voice of God within, there you are. And the voice of God sounds an awful lot like your voice. Helping me come back into that wholeness. We remind each other that we are beloved of God. We are compassionate. Boy, are you ever. Are we ever, but are you ever. That compassion looks like dinners. It looks like rides. It looks like a kind word. It looks like I will pray for you. It looks like Love in action. In so many ways. Where compassionate also means saying yes and no with kindness. Of hearing the self-compassion necessary to not overextend and then have all of our stuff come out sideways. I don't know about you, that may or may not happen to me every now and again. <laughs> that compassion shows up in holding each other through all the sorrows, through all of the joys, walking with each other. We are joyful. And in case you didn't know, thanks to Tina, we now have a beautiful red welcome rug. Thank you, Tina that shouts joy. It's fabulous. And joy is sometimes that effervescent, cheerful face we see. It's the bubbling up of the spirit within. And it's more than that. Because it is that deep spirit well that is the foundation, along with love, that we reach for, that we grow from beyond any circumstance. So that even when our window is broken, even when we're faced with praying for a war across the sea that has lasted for weeks, violence in our own state, 
we can still tap into that deep joy because we bring each other along in that. We practice sacred service. I've run through that list. So many ways that you show up in this community to give of yourself. And we are growing in our outreach. And we are growing in our ability to meet the needs of our neighborhood, of this city, and of the community. We're listening to our holy heartbreak, our holy imaginations, our holy rebellion. And we are finding ways to cross that bridge that does feel so far sometimes. We claim spiritual abundance. We trust in divine order, divine timing, affirming the bounty of creation, trusting that our needs are met. We're stewards of our time, financial and other resources. And we nurture that abundant life in the spirit right here as we are doing now. All of who we are and what we bring to every moment of our lives is fed here in this joyful abundance. Today's daily word invites us to take stock and do some spiritual housekeeping as the key to lasting freedom. As individual cells in the heart of our unity body, that's going to be our homework. How am I helping us embrace and embody the best of who we say we are? How are you helping us embrace and embody the best of who we say we are? And seriously, there is no quiz. And I, but I will post the homework. Yes, students, I will post the homework on the website. Roger posts the recordings every week. Um, often the PDF of my talk is up there. But this week when that recording goes up, so will a PDF of the questions that I'm inviting us to live with, to talk with our friends about, to meditate over, to pray with, to journal with, to sit with, to talk with, to walk with. So here are the questions. How do these core values resonate and bring you to your own resounding yes? How do they challenge you? Is there a statement that makes your inner roommate, like some of these do mine, say, mm-hmm, wagging my finger at you? Do you recognize with self-compassion your own growing edge? What do you need from me as your minister and from your community to more fully embrace and embody all you are called to be? The thought for today from One Spirit is a quote from Ellen Grace O'Brien and in the divine timing of spiritual abundance. It felt perfect for this message today and for my embracing of these poems that feed me. Our ability to dream of possibilities, to vision and bring forth what we are here to do for the greater good should not be underestimated. It is how we cooperate with the infinite. We are a community on a path of cooperation with the infinite. There is only love. 
There is only love that heals and sets us free. Remember who you are, beloved child of the divine. Remember who you are. Sense the presence of all those on this path with you. And sense that each of us is a living, breathing cell in the life-giving way that this world needs us to beat its heart. May the love awakening inside of me, the love awakening inside of you and inside of all of us together, may it transform the world. May it be so, and so it is. Amen. Amen.